Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at Arrange, functionality that lets you arrange objects over a user-defined area. Before we jump into showing you the functionality, the first thing to let you know is that Arrange can actually be accessed from both the design and the manufacturing workspace. To access from design, simply open your preferences, navigate to design, and ensure that you've got the Enable Arrange and Simplifiers tools tick box enabled. From there, open the Modify dropdown and you'll be able to use Arrange. The other thing to note before we jump over into the Manufacturer Workspace is that Arrange requires components to perform the arrangement. So everything that you want to apply within an Arrange needs to be split up into its own component. From there, let's jump over into the Manufacturer Workspace and see how the functionality works. As you saw from the design workspace, this particular design has two tables within it. I'm going to use manufacturing models to decide which table I want to manufacture. So let's jump into manufacturing model one and check out a range. So just like the design workspace, head over to modify and select a range. The first thing you need to do is select all the objects you want to apply within the range. I'm just going to use a box select in this instance. Next, you choose a plane or sketch. In this case, I'm just going to apply it to the XY plane. And the range takes care of the rest. As you can see, all my parts have been arranged within my specified length and width. Now I can choose a border spacing. That's going to be the amount of material around the edge of my length and width. In this case, I'm going to choose 20 millimeters. And item separation is the space between each component. In this case, we'll choose 14 millimeters. The only thing left to change in this particular arrangement is that if we rotate our view, you can see there's a series of pockets on the underside of this table. Now we want to get access to those on our first manufacturing setup. So I can simply flip that particular tabletop by using the flip icon. And now you can see we have access to those pockets for machining. And with that, I can press OK. Now, like with all design changes, an item does get added to the history. So if I do want to go in and edit my range, simply right click and edit. And I can change any of my parameters, whether that be the length, the width, the border spacing, or any of the objects contained within the range. So with that, press OK. At this point, I can finish the edit of my manufacturing model and I'm ready to create toolpaths. Now on to manufacturing model two. And in this case, we're going to use the round table design. So again, I'm going to right click and edit the manufacturing model. Head up to modify and arrange. Select the objects I want to apply to the arrange. And this time, instead of selecting a plane, I'm actually going to select a predefined sketch. So let's go ahead and open our sketch. This case is sketch number three. So I can simply select that sketch area and the arrangement will be applied within that particular area. Let's go ahead and change our border spacing once again, 20 millimeters around the edge and 12 millimeters spacing. At this point I'm happy, so let's go ahead and press OK. Now because this is an unconstrained sketch, I can simply select it sketch edge, drag it, and the arrangement will automatically recalculate. Again, I can select an edge, drag it, and the arrangement will be recalculated. This is a brilliant tool if you want to determine the minimum size sheet required to manufacture the selected objects. Now, once you get too small, the arrangement icon at the bottom of the screen will turn red, meaning that the objects do not fit within that particular sketch. So let's just go ahead make that bigger again and the arrangement will be applied. Now in this particular case I've used a rectangular sketch but you don't have to. So let's go ahead and edit the arrange. I'm going to deselect that particular sketch, just hide it and show sketch 4. As you can see this sketch represents a remnant so let's go ahead and select that. On doing so you see that there's an error because all of those objects do not fit within that particular sketch. So in this case, I'm actually going to remove one of the objects. It's really easy to do. Just select it from the list and press this X icon. We have a few more options regarding object selection as well. So let's take this object, for instance. 
I can actually manually override the orientation of a particular object by manually selecting a face. And as you can see, the orientation adapts. In this particular case, I don't want to do that, so I'll return it to its default orientation. Lastly, you can actually use a sketch to define the component boundary that's used in a range. And you can do that to avoid situations like this, where components are arranged within other components. So instead of selecting the entire object, what I'm actually going to do is open up the Arrange Demo folder and the round table, open up the central joint, and you can see we've actually got a sketch that represents the outer border of that particular shape. Press OK, rotate my view, and you can see that no components have been arranged within that particular component itself. With that, I can press Finish, and I'm ready to start creating toolpaths. So Manufacturing Model 3 contains our original table. So this time, once again, let's open up the Modify dropdown and select Arrange. I select the objects I want to arrange, again using a box select. Now this time, instead of selecting a plane or a sketch, we're actually going to select a solid face. And in this instance, we've mocked up our router table and we're going to use a solid face for our arrangement. So in this case, we select plane or sketch, select the face we want to apply it to, and the first thing you'll notice is if we take a view from the right hand side, that our parts have got nested on the incorrect side of that particular face. But that's no problem. We can use the flip plane or sketch icon. And now if we take an isometric view, our parts have been nested correctly. Again, you can see our tabletop has been nested the wrong way around. Again, we want to take that tabletop and flip it so we have access to our pockets. And we're happy with the same border spacing and item separation that we've used throughout. With that, I can press OK, finish the edit of the manufacturing model, and we're ready to start programming. So I've gone through and created all the necessary toolpaths. We've got a series of toolpaths for the pockets, and then one toolpath to cut the outer contours. So with that, let's take a look at a simulation to verify the programming. While the simulation runs, let me tell you about how a range works. So it uses 0, 90, 180, and 270 degree rotation increments on a single sheet that can be specified either using a plane, a sketch, or a solid face. It arranges components in an area, so it doesn't take into account material, material thickness, or allow you to specify a quantity multiplier. If you'd like added control over material, thickness, quantities, or extra control over angular constraints, check out the preview item, Nesting Manufacture. Now that we're happy with our simulation, we can post our code and send it to the machine. Thanks for watching this arranged tutorial. We'll catch you in the next one.